I have Robin Cross with us. He's with Stone X in Chicago. His specialty is another uh, kind of a niche market there, and that's the lumber market. And uh, Robin, I always enjoy your commentary on this. What's driving lumber today and why? Good morning, Marlon. Thank you for having me. And to your previous point, lumber is the niche market. I don't know of any other that's quite like this one. But uh, So we'll, I guess we'll jump into it. Uh, good morning, bud. It's good to talk to you today. Uh, first of all, let's go over some prices. January lumber's trading this morning. It's up a couple bucks. We're up uh, five dollars with eighty trades. That's actually decent volume. Uh, we've had some pretty sad volume here over the last couple weeks, so that's not such a bad start for today. March lumber, soon to be your lead, is five fifty four, up two bucks over there with nineteen trades. You know. As we get ready for the holidays, Marlon, and we begin to wind down 2023, any seasoned trader will tell you in December, especially late December, this is one of the trickiest times to trade all year. At this point in the year, you pretty much made what you're going to make or lost what you were willing to lose. So most traders are simply offsetting previously placed positions. So for example, the market goes up on any given day in December. That's most likely because the shorts are getting out, unless you had some you know, outstanding news, but typically that's what it is. And that the same is also true if the market goes down. It's simply longs exiting the market. And that's something that's pretty easy to track. On November 1st, open interest was a respectable, and this was the best it was so far in this new contract, uh, 9,000 contracts. And as the market chopped around from then to the first half of Z, uh, December, open interest has declined, and we lost about 2,700 contracts already, bringing it down to this morning's uh, 6,300, thus confirming my previous statement that both sides of the market have been exiting, uh, you know, due to year-end liquidation. And uh, the lumber futures haven't really given you no love either. They've been the flat two-sided range bond market as well. On November 16th, the day after NOV expiration, January Lumber put in a low of 526.50. And as you know, I like to talk about this all the time, leaving a small gap from expiration of about $6.50. Typically, that, that's not one that you would take action on, but it's still something to make note of. You know, so that gap was from NOV's expiration price of 520 bucks. Then we had our seasonal end of year production curtailments, which we covered on the air several times. Uh, beginning to kind of creep in the market in the minds of traders, as it always does at this time. You know, so then it kind of caused some short covering, which ended up rallying Jan to its high uh, last week of 553. But that move as well was short lived for a couple of reasons. On one hand, 553 has been considered good technical resistance basically this entire year, basically for the last 14 months. You know, it's, it's really the high of the market's been around the 550s. And as you know, the low has been around the 480s. So as soon as we got up there, that was also a premium to the underlying cash price, which Random Lengths reported at 516. And, you know, just a little sidebar on print. I've been tracking it for 24 years or something crazy like that, and this is the first time I can recollect that we actually had six in a row flat prints. The price has not gone up or went down in any of, uh, any of the latest reports. So once we made that high, the longs began to take profit, as they should. Then we broke down and eventually filled the gap down to 520, which is our recent low in January on December 5th. So we left the gap on the 16th, rallied for curtailments, came down and filled the gap. And then since then, the market has been sideways, two-sided trade, literally from, I would call it from 525 to 545. We've been literally stuck in the mud. So, you know, this point going forward in the rest of the contract, you know, I would advise caution on both sides. You know, there's there's no sense in getting involved, you know, just for the sake of getting involved. I think speculation should remain at a minimal unless there's an obvious move, right? And still look at, uh, you know, your hedge and basis opportunities it should be your, like, driving factor of making decisions on trades. Because other than that, I think it's going to be a chop fest. Uh, for the rest of the year, and we will see what uh, 2023 brings, or 2024, geez. Absolutely, me, yeah. Up. Well, I'm glad you uh, explained all that about all the gaps on the pattern and everything, and yeah, uh, this time of year, of course, uh, the volume usually slows down in most commodities, so yeah, we'll uh, look forward to when we get into the new calendar year, see what that brings, but I uh, appreciate you uh, spending some time with us here, Robin. Robin Cross of Stone X is in Chicago. We'll come back in just a moment. I'll run through the latest on our livestock trade and see what they're up to when we come back.